In this video, you will learn about the high resolution Path 4K microscope camera. I will be opening it, showing everything to you, and then Mike Miller from iMiller Microscope, the person who actually sold this camera to me, is gonna join us and walk us through the installation and all the functionalities of the InFocus software, including the calibration of your objectives for measurement. So be sure to stick around. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alexandra Zhurev and I'm here to help you do better digital pathology. So if this is what you're after, be sure to subscribe and click the bell below to be notified every time I release a new video. If you are taking pictures with your microscope, be it as a hobby or for your work or for digital pathology with static images, and you have outgrown your phone or your low resolution camera and are considering stepping up your game, this gear might be for you. Similar to normal photography, if you are serious about it, if you like it enough, at some point you probably upgraded your gear to a DSLR or a mirrorless camera with lenses. This is where I got with my photography and this is what I upgraded to. So if you're interested and wanna check it out, there's gonna be an affiliate link in the description, but now let's open this thing, take it out of the box and later see what it actually can do. Here I have this package. This is the Path 4K microscope camera that's gonna go here. Let us open this box. It's and you can see, it's not too big of a box. I'm gonna later write you the specs, like how big it was and specs of the whole camera. But let's open it. Usually my kids help me with opening at least Amazon packages, but I will do it this one myself. I got this one, uh, this camera from iMiller Microscopes, so they sure packed it well. Come on, come on, come on. iMiller, iMiller Microscopes. Okay. Here we have our Path 4K. It's actually as big as the box was. I like the box a lot. Ooh. I'm gonna show you all what's there. Come on. This is our camera and has all the outlets here. That's what it's gonna be. This can go. We have a charger. This can go. We even have a special mouse. Hmm. Card. This looks like a slide. Let me check it. I think it's a calibration slide. Indeed, this is a calibration slide I will, this has a circle in the center with the 0.1 millimeter, 0.01 millimeter mark to calibrate. We have some kind of USB stick, Comcast USB stick, and Mike from iMillers is gonna join me later and show me what, how to connect everything and how it works. We have another USB stick and we have some cables. A USB cable, HDMI cable. Here is everything that we have. And it's gonna go here. I'm super excited to connect it. 
So I have one of the USBs that came with the camera and we're going to plug it in and install quickly the drivers for our Path 4K. Okay, when I plug it in, we have this in focus setup. I assume that's it. Mike is going to confirm in a minute. Let me install it. Yes. Okay, so here we are in the in focus and uh, we're going to see how. Mike, hi, how are you? I'm good, Alex. And you? Look what I have. Yes, <laughs> very pretty. I just opened it. I installed the software. I have my microscope ready. So let's put it all together. Tell me what to do. All right. I have so all the parts have... distributed here. So you just tell me what to connect to what. Okay. So you should have a small little three millimeter Allen screw, a uh, small little Allen key that came with the microscope. So sorry, that's separate. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Let something just like this. It. This. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So that is a universal tool that almost all microscopes can use to adjust things. It's a three millimeter Allen screw. So anyway, all right. So it yes, first step here, is right? to use yep the th use the three millimeter screw to remove the cap. Just a couple turns should be fine until that comes off. All right. Perfect. It's off. Yep. All right. Now the easiest step would be to attach the camera and the C mount first. So the camera is the red camera. And the C mount should be, I believe, a black. Sorry, that was not in the box. It would have been with the microscope originally. Mm -hmm. All right, good. This thing? Yes, perfect. Ta da. Yep, that's it. All right, so I don't know okay. if you want to restart or. Uh... Okay, so, I have this C that mount. Have... That's what it is, right? Yes, so now that you have the cap off and you have the C says... mount. Exactly. And again, cap the. Off. Yep. Um, so, um, so one side of it is the threads, and if you put that down and pick the camera up, just put, yep. There is if you pop now the black rubber cap off the bottom of the yep threading there, and essentially you just screw on the C mount to the camera. There you go. Make sure it's snug. Okay, that's good. And then you're going to position that on top of the trinocular port with Which the port. Which side? Where do the these guys go to the to the facing back, back or? Yep. Yep. The okay, port's so facing back. Me... So that has the vertical cord wrap, which is really nice because it won't pull out, but also therefore is hard to plug back in. But anyway, that's the scope. So yes, now they have the camera. So the camera goes with the ports facing backwards, right like that. And then you'll use that same Allen key to tighten that set screw in because you don't want the, yep, you don't want the camera falling off. And you want it as straight as possible. So you want the, the camera to oh. be facing you as straight as possible. So the image is straight. Perfect. Okay. And just just tight enough so it's, yep, you don't have to crank it too tight, just tight enough so it's not going anywhere. Perfect. Okay. All right. So the camera is now installed on the microscope. The final step will be to plug and connect the camera. So the camera has a separate power cord as well as a USB cord that should be with it. Yep. Power so power cord, cord uh, you'll just untie the zip, the twist tie, plug that into the back of the camera, showing everything okay. here. Um, yep. So that there's a separate port that you'll see easily identify where that goes. To the, uh, on the front, back, right? Yep. Or uh, it should be no, well to the back. Yep. Wherever the port. Yep. Exactly. And it may be helpful too. You can actually spin the camera like this. Yeah. Yep. There you go. So now you can easily get to the ports. It, it, yeah. Perfect. Yep. All right. So that's now power, said... and then the USB, and uh, yep, the small one. Yep. Exactly. And because the camera has multiple output modes, that's why there's separate cords that come with it, and that's why there's also a separate power supply. So a lot of conventional microchip cameras get power over the USB. Um, therefore, you know, you plug it into the computer, and it gets power from the computer. In this case, because the, this camera can be used in standalone mode, which means it can be used in HDMI mode or in Wi-Fi mode without the need to connect it to a computer, that's why there's separate power. So that's the explanation there. So yes, on the bottom port on the camera, there's two ports. Um, you're going to want to make sure that's plugged into the bottom one, which is USB 3.0. It's the one that's blue. Yeah, I see. It's blue, right? Yep. And let me show you. It has blue as well. So it's yep, all exactly. compatible. So the camera, it's also important to note, is backward compatible. So if you don't have a computer that has a USB 3.0 port, it will still work. But you'll suffer from some... Um, frame rate slowness, uh, not impactful of the image, it will still work, but it's ideal to be in a USB 3 port. Okay, I have now, it. Now I would just turn the camera back so it's straight and tighten it on the C-mount. There you go. And then on the right-hand mm -hmm. side, you'll see there's an on-off uh, button. 
So it should be red right now, correct? Oh, wait, I'm going to show it to everyone. Okay. This one. So is the light showing up red right now? Yes, it is. I see Perfect. that it's red. So red is okay. off, and then you're going to push the on-off button once, and it's going to blink a few times, and after about 10 seconds, it will boot up and turn on. Okay. All right, and then that is the full installation and connection of the camera. So again, putting it what on the C-mount. What about the SD card here? Yep, so that is actually, again, I talked about how it can be used in standalone mode and HDMI mode. And in order to then capture images, you can actually still capture images without a computer to the SD card. So there's an SD card that comes with the camera, and you can I certainly install that. that. Yep. Now, again, that, that's only applicable in HDMI mode. So we can talk about that okay, again, so but right now we're focusing on the other USB cable. Mode. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yep. Let me turn to the correct position. Yep. Okay. All right. And if you have the software already installed, then all you have to do yeah. is launch the software called In Focus. Not ah, perfect. Okay. And right from here, you can see that in the upper left hand corner, the camera list says Path 4K. So just clicking on Path 4K will bring us to the Yeah, line. that's our camera. Oh, we need a slide. Let's um, slide click here. It. Uh, there is a newer version of the software. It uh, functions the same, um, the layout's the same. I can just tell tons uh, are. So there is a newer version, um, but this will work for, for the demonstration purposes. That would be helpful. And I know this Maybe is a minor thing, the but... slide a little bit. <laughs> yes. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. So out of the box, the camera works mm -hmm. well, but there are a few adjustments that I would advise to make. Um, these are common adjustments that almost every micro camera would be uh, needing to be adjusted out of the box. So the first Count thing me. we want to do... Um, is just kind of going through, um, can I have mouse controls here, or is that not capable? I don't think so for okay. this one. No problem. Yeah, you have, um, but everything is going to be here, right? Yep, yep. So on the left-hand side, we'll just work our way down. So capture, you have snap and record. That's obviously snapping a picture and recording mm -hmm. a movie. Um, below that is the resolution. So it's actually kind of nice. We are in a 4K camera, so this is 4K mode. You can lower the live and capture resolution if you wish. I would, again, okay. it, there's really no purpose to, but that's just what that does. Um, and then we can expand our exposure and gain options there. So that's clicking on the little carrot. Yep, exactly. So in um, pathology work, for the most part, you're going to want expo auto exposure on. That means when you go from objective to objective, the amount of light that so gets to the camera changes. So having auto exposure on will help compensate for the exposure. Now, you can still, with auto exposure on, adjust the exposure target, which, as you just did, up. Oh, um, you may want to bring what that back up. Uh, I think you click defaults, which which goes back to zero. Um, so just bring the uh, mm -hmm. nope, uh, bring the exposure target back up to about 120. There you 120, go. 120. Okay. So that's 120 is default, but there's no right or wrong. It's whatever looks good for you. All right. Mm -hmm. Now we can scroll down a little bit and expand the white balance tab. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now here again, standard is white balance. Now, your microscope is an LED microscope. It's important to talk about this for a quick second. LED microscopes, LED bulbs, have the same color temperature. So no matter what you do, when you increase the, the light, it stays the same color. Older mm -hmm. halogen microscopes were, 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 um, had different color temperatures at different intensities. So when you would increase the light, it would get blue. When you would decrease it, it would get yellow. That would require you to white balance consistently. Again, with LED microscopes, once you do a white balance once, as long as nothing changes, then you shouldn't have to do it again. So in this, with the Path 4K, with the InFocus software, the way you do that is select ROI. You click the ROI circle there. You'll see a region of interest comes up. Now, what you want to do is you can move that exactly to a white space, and then that's going to capture that white as the new white. And then in this case, we're going to set this back to manual. So on the left-hand side, you'll just set it to manual. And then we're going to forget it. So right there, you did a white balance. If you left ROI up, it's going to use the ROI at all times. And if global auto is kind of automatically trying to white balance across the whole image, so point is manual is what you leave it at. It allows you to adjust it if needed, but if not, it will stay consistent. All right. Okay. What about this part here, this dark part? Good question, Alex. I, I, we, we can certainly um, fi fix that. Um, what I mean is that's a phenomenon in microscopy called vignetting. I guess in photography called vignetting. Mm -hmm. um, essentially what you're seeing there is the improper magnification of a C-mount. So again, we talked about the C-mount. C-mounts have magnifications. 
what you want to do is you want to expand the image um, to make to, to fill the field of view of the chip, the chip and the sensor inside of the camera. So right now we're using a half inch C mount, which is expanding it a little bit too wide. And you're actually seeing mm -hmm. the walls of the optical field. So the black aspect there is called vignetting. So really what, what we should do is provide you a 0.7x C mount, which would shrink our field, um, eliminating the vignetting. Uh, again, that was just a, an oversight on our part here. Um, usually we, we provide the appropriate C mount for the camera that you're using. Uh, in this case, again, it should be a 0.7, you have a 0.5. So you're just seeing a little bit too much. So it's called vignetting, okay. that can be corrected. Um, it's an important thing so to talk about. So basically, the yeah. C mount, we need the little bigger one. A little, yeah, higher magnification, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry, higher. Now, magnification. there is also, this is important to talk about, um, with our podcast we did, um, there's ways and reasons you, you may want to see as much as you can in the field of view. So for a frozen section, you're not capturing images. You don't care about having the vignetting. You want to see as much as you can on the slide. So there are use cases where you use a lower magnification C mount to see a large field of view. Um, if you look through your eyepieces right now, you'll see that you see probably 95% of the field of view, which is sometimes desirable. Other times for pretty pictures, you don't want any imperfections and therefore you would use a different C mount to accommodate that. The software I'll also note can also have you crop and you can actually capture to an area of interest to eliminate that in the software. But again, so I proper basically microscope. Center um, you would actually go to what I'm interested in. Yep, you would go to file image select and then you would select the area and then you would capture that specific area. File. Uh, I'm sorry, edit. I'm sorry, it's edit, I thought, I believe. It's okay. Okay, where do I go again? Uh, edit at the top. There you go, image, image select. select. And now just draw an area say... of an interest. Yep. And now if you hit snap on the left, there you go. So mm -hmm. it only captured that area there. And you can zoom in on this image. Um, it's just zoomed out. So I'm um, holding control and scrolling with the mouse wheel allows you to zoom in. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, now, when you do uh, image select, you, you, you do shrink your size. When you blow it up, you do get some pixelization at some point. Uh, but again, proper way is to use the proper C mount to eliminate that. And Alex, as a quick aside, if you wanted to, we can ship you one out tomorrow and we can redo this next week if you prefer. Um, or this is okay, a good opportunity to talk about this. this. Uh, let's do this because then I can show the thing with the vignetting okay. and then we're gonna I'm gonna put the right C mount and when we're gonna show the correct I think this is important information because that's happening with every camera right right well it's important and again knowledgeable person knowledgeable sales rep would identify the right C mount and provide you the right C mount with the camera in this case we sent you the camera for evaluation you had already bought the C mount that's where the disconnect we're happy to send you the proper one though that's no problem so i'll get that sent out to you today okay um so okay. um but we can still continue talking so so again here when you click capture um the way that the software works and please keep in mind everything about this software can be customized the way that it comes by default is when you click capture it brings you to the captured image so if you move your mouse down a little bit nope sorry um across just move out of the capture area just click anywhere else so see where it says now video path 4k at the top, the tab. Tab video, yes, it okay, has Okay, perfect. It. So the way that the software works is it's tab-based. So if you click back on the video tab, that brings you back mm -hmm. to live. So again, when you click capture, the, ca the software by default shows you the captured image. In certain applications, mm -hmm. you may have a slide tray that you wanna capture multiple images and then see them after, then we can set it to stay live. Every time you click capture, it just captures it in the background. So everything about the workflow okay. is customizable in this sense. Um, what we want to do is uh, go back to edit and uncheck image select because now it's going to crop our next images as well. So uncheck that. Okay, there we go. So um, again, um, we, we kind of skipped to capturing an image, but uh, we, we can also go back through um, our, our white balance. We covered color adjustments. So that's about the, old, the last thing I would want to just talk about here is um, mm -hmm. these are your optimal settings or, or to optimize the image. I always like to say, you don't want software to fake anything, but you can have it certainly enhance what you see through the eyepieces. So I say that because you looking through the eyepieces can say, okay, this tissue looks, the color looks accurate. Perfect. We're happy. Now I know that by default, the camera, the gamma of the camera may be a little too high. So maybe a little bit too pink. So if you see the gamma slider there, try sliding that to four or five and seeing if that is a better representation of what you see through the eyepieces. Mm -hmm. Yes, it looks more, right. more, well, five is optimal. Five is more or less what I see under the Perfect. microscope. 
Perfect. Yes. Okay. So again, that the, the two things out of the box with this camera and with most cameras is you want to do a white balance for sure, and you may have to tweak the colors because every sample is different and all that. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. Then as far as the other options go down there, um, th th those are all minor settings. Um, the only other thing you may want to is hit flip. So flip is to uh, orient the eyepiece image to the, to, the, to the camera image. So if you look through the eyepieces, um, I would think that your sample is going down this, instead of yes. up. There you go. So the flip allows you to match the orientation. Oh, wow. Yep. That is nice. <laughs> yep. And this, wait. Mm, no. This yep. is matching. Okay. Perfect. All right. Um, again, dark field correction and miscellaneous, don't worry about those. Those are uh, features that don't really apply. Um, and that's really it. So for pathology and, and, and in the clinical space, um, people, you just want it simple and image capture. So again, there's ways you can do things that you see across the top. You can measure. Um, measurement's important. We can, oh, you here. have to calibrate the microscope. Yep. You have to calibrate the system um, before you measure. And I know. Here measures. is the calibration slide. Yep. And I have videos on calibration, so I have a workflow on how to calibrate it. Um, you would go to options, calibration, and you would use the calibration slide um, to then provide your, your calibration. So if you hit yes here, um, uh, hit, yeah, hit yes. So essentially what you would do in this case is if you move that window out a little bit, the calibrate window out of the way, you see there's a red line there. Oh, yeah. And essentially what you're doing is when you put your stage micrometer on there, you tell the red line, this line equals, let's say it's one millimeter. And then you you, add, you put that information in, and then your we system can is do this. Sure. Perfect. So, what you would do in this case is you would drag the end bars of that red line, so it matches the scale bar there. Yep. And the other end too. And then, it, obviously, it's a little bit zoomed out. I believe you're on the four X. So what you can actually do is hold the no, nope, leave it on four. Um, sorry, oh, it's so you want it, you have two to and a half. Okay, two and a half. So you have to calibrate each objective individually. But what you can do okay. is if you hold the scroll button, uh, hold the control button and scroll up with your mouse wheel. Uh, if you're on a laptop, perhaps you see in the upper left hand corner. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so you're, you're getting it. So, um, yeah, so we can we can zoom in and um, now we can actually uh, make sure that we can fine tune that to make sure our calibrations are accurate. That is fantastic. Yeah. All right, and then in this case, when you're done with that, in their magnification, just double click in there and you can type in the magnification you're at. And that's uh, two and a half. Yep. And then the actual length, I know that scale bar, that stage micrometer you give you is one millimeter. So you're actually going to put in one millimeter or a, a thousand microns. Um, uh, a millimeter. Yep, two down. One. Mm-hmm. And then hit OK. okay. Alright. And now we are calibrated for the two and a half X. And now a way that you can okay. te check and your we... calibration. Again? Yeah, sorry. Uh, a way that you can check your calibration is clicking uh, on the scale bar. I'm sorry, the, the, the um, distance line tool, which is up at the top, just below where it says window. It's the first line icon there can't see. okay uh, yep exactly and then that's going to create this crosshair cursor and that means that we're in the line drawing tool so yep and again you can hold control and, sh and zoom in to, to uh, sh and, and scroll up to zoom in but i have a pretty good uh, uh under oh, but yep exactly there you go and now you can confirm that that is now showing one millimeter okay yes now, again, I okay. want to keep this simple and for the sake of time. I have videos on how to do all of this, but on the left-hand side We're going to link here, in the description. Yep. Whatever on the left -hand you know, more side, advanced resources you have, we put it in the description. Set the default line colors and the default text colors. Um, again, that's more uh, you know, above and beyond how to show you how to do things. So you can change when you, when you, when you make a measurement, this window up here is called measurement. You can then change parameters about that exact measurement. So if you wanted to change the line color or the width, you can do that there. But again, you can actually change the, yep. You can also change the default properties of the line. So you can say, every time I draw a line, I want it to be black or red or green or whatever the case mm -hmm. is. These are, the standard is by default, it shows you uh, red. 
Okay, yeah. and where do I do I do I do the standard? Where do I so, change the standard color? Yep, under options at the top, uh, measurement, and then object on the left hand side. So actually, yep, we can stop here. Yep. So right there is actually the label color. So that is the mm -hmm. label and the text. So if you want to change that to let's just say black, okay. Um, and then under object, here is all of your measurement tools. So the second one there is line, and you can see it says uh, line color. Let's just change that. You know, you can do black again if you want. All right. I also suggest changing the line width to about five. Oops, sorry, stay there. So the width there, um, just above where the line color is. Yep, change that to about five. Mm -hmm. And then other things are, um, that's really it. But each measurement that you see across the top bar there, these are the default properties. As you see, set the default properties of the measurement object. So if you are constantly doing a, an arrow or a text box, these are all things, and this is where you change all those settings mm -hmm. by the de default settings. Okay, so now if you hit apply and okay. And now if you just go back to the, you're, you're already on. So see how the cur the line is, the, the icon at the top under window is still selected. It means you're still in line draw mode. So if you draw another line, you know, it doesn't just be, it can be anywhere. Um, oh, okay, it changed. Now, yep, now you'll see it's a little thicker and it's black. Okay, so we changed the default properties of those lines. Now, if you wanted to move the text box or readjust the line, there's a little shortcut. It, you, can, you can move the mouse up to the, top and select the selection tool, the cursor, or just right click. So right click with your mouse and that crosshair then changed to the cursor. And now you can go, you can move that text box if you want. Um, yep. And you can even then grab the end bar. And, uh, oh, you're grabbing the whole thing, but there you go. Or you can grab the end bar and reposition the line. Mm -hmm. okay. Perfect. So again, we calibrated this. Now it's Oops. important to note, we only calibrated this so far in the two and a half Four. X objective. So if you see in the upper left side, upper left area where it says millimeter and then 2.5x. So that is where you would select different magnifications. So here we only mm -hmm. did two and a half, but if you did the four, 10, 40, you would then select that. Now, again, it's important to note your microscope is not encoded. Most of them are not. Therefore, you want to be able, you want to make sure you tell the software what magnification you're on either in live mode when you're measuring or when you capture the image so your measurements will be accurate in your captured image. It's an important step to make sure you understand. Okay. okay. And I know I'm rambling a lot here, so I apologize, but. No problem. Anything else that's, I mean, I can explore everything here. Uh, yeah. And so the, the, the other things are, um, I usually clean up the user interface a little bit. So on the left, the bottom left, you see how you now have the measurement tab is selected. Then you have layer, undo, and folders, and camera. I usually hide all of those tabs besides camera for my clinical customers. Um, it just cleans up the workflow a little bit. Um, how do I do all... this? So, so oh, under here. the measure tab, yep, just click on the little, uh, click on the, now go up towards the top again, and there's a little red X. Yep. And then close layer, close undo, redo. And you can leave folders up. Folders is how you navigate to your previously captured images. But camera, the camera tab, you want to keep the camera tab up because that's your settings. Okay. Mm -hmm. Again, the software is very um, optimizable. So like in this case, you see the little back up towards the top, there's a little pin next to the red X that you were just at. So this is auto hide. So if you, if you select that, click that, and then move the mouse off of the menu, move, there, it automatically hides it. So you have a larger oh, screen to work okay. with. You put the click the pin again, and it will pin it back to uh, to always showing it there. Okay. So that's cleaning that up a little bit. Um, again, if you're not going to be doing any measurements, or if you want to hide all of the other measurements, we can hide those icons. Um, the software is very customizable in that sense. The last thing I would talk about is really just capturing, which we kind of went over, and saving. Okay. So mm -hmm. in this case, I don't know if you want to put your Let me change slide the back slide. on. Yep. So cool. Oh, wow. There you go. And if okay. you want to do, um, you can hit control A or you can individually select your measurements and hit delete. So if you hit control A, you're selecting them all and then you can delete them all. 
or just individually select them and hit delete. Yep. Mm -hmm. So let me do individually. I take one line and then I right click, I touch it, I click delete, and yep. I delete it. All right. And now go back to the camera tab on the bottom left. So you're, again, there's a setting that says measurement tab show up all the time. We can turn that off. But um, OK, so now we're here. We have a nice, pretty image. And in this case, to capture your image, click Snap. OK, and again, this now shows us our newly captured image. And the way the software works is it's this tab base, like a browser. So in this case, mm -hmm. we see here we have 001, 002, and we have an asterisk. The asterisk means that these images are not saved yet. So in order okay. to save them, what we can do is with the image selected, you want to save. In the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the floppy disk icon, the old school save icon. Otherwise, control S is a shortcut, but by clicking on that, it brings us to our dialog here. We can then pick a location. We can give it a name. We can save our file type however you want it. Let's just put it on the desktop. Yep. You just do usually tests or something like that. Okay. And then hit And we can save. select whatever we want here. Yep. PNG, for example. Let me see. And now once you save the image, you'll notice that the name changes and the asterisk goes away. That means this image has now been saved. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now there are so, even more advanced... Go ahead, sorry. Yep. Question. If I want to snap the image but still have the live view, how do I change this? Sure. So go to options at the top. Preferences. So here under uh, capture down the left hand side there. So here we're talking about a few different things capture with measurements. So again, we can make measurements live and then capture them with the image. Um, we then can capture uh, where it says always switch focus to newly captured image. You want to uncheck that and hit apply and OK. One second. So yep. this here, what do we do here? Uh, I wouldn't worry about DPI. As long as you calibrate the microscope, your 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 calibrations will be accurate. So I'm, let me tell you why I'm asking. Is this resolution that it? Um, because for publications, if you want to um, capture something for publication, they always want at least 300 DPI. Is this it, or is it some other DPI? So Stop that's it. Um, that. That's it. And the, the DPI is actually, um, and I'm not an expert in this, but it's actually a, a characteristic of your monitor. So you can actually go to a website, I think it's whatsmydpi.com or something like that, and you can get the dots per inch of mm -hmm. your monitor, and then you can input that there. So that's how that would work. Okay. Because I think when you take a screenshot, most of the monitors, it's just 72. Whereas if you want a, uh, something for publication, it has to be bigger. I'm going to put 300, and we're going to okay. capture one, and later I will check if it actually has 300. Okay, um, hit apply first, actually. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry I think sorry, it, sorry. it may still save it, but let's just check. Options, yeah, preferences, preferences, capture, capture, apply. Okay, it's still saved. All right, good. Okay. Okay. All right, good. All right, so now okay. if you go back to the video tab, go back to live, and now if we hit snap again, it should stay live and capture the image in the background. Perfect. So now we're still live. And you know that because the tab that's bold is the tab you're on. Yep. And you can obviously move it and see if you move it. All right. So if I want to save this one. Now, while you're here, too, um, if you're in a clinical pathology lab, you can act and you have a barcode reader. You can actually scan at this stage. You can scan the barcode, and it would actually use the barcode information to populate the name. Some people like that. Oh, wow. Um, and then I'll show you one other thing. So click Save here. So mm -hmm. in, in the case of... Let's say you have a slide tray and you want to capture multiple images that are all with the same patient. So just click snap four or five times, just capture a bunch of images. All right. Now go up to file and you're going to select batch save. Exactly as it sounds. In this case here, it brings up this dialogue. It says, hey, where do you want to pick an, uh, the folder? So if you wanted to select something different, I would click on the little icon there. Yep. And you can find, uh, you know, whatever folder. This is just the, just mm -hmm. the default folder. Um, which is fine. You can just leave it in there. We can just leave this one. Yep. Um, uh, so hit OK. You can create a subfolder. So, so each time you capture, we would create a subfolder with the date if you needed it. I would just leave it at none for now, or you can just show it when you're doing that. Sure. Um, and then here, 
we can actually also, um, in the naming format, I usually select uh, sequential numbering. So drop, uh, drop that down and just pick the sequence numbering system. And then here under file prefix. So again, this is what each unsaved image is going to be used with as a prefix. So if you put patient A, let's just say, And again, you can change the file type if you want. Mm -hmm. And now, JPEG. when you click Capture, when you click OK, watch, every other unsaved image at the top will then auto-save with the location we gave it, the prefix name, and then just the OO number after it. So again, that's a nice mm -hmm. way of bash saving your images together. So okay. basically, I can work my slide, work my case, take all the pictures. Once I'm done with the slide, I do this and it's saved under sure whichever I case I was looking at. Correct. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Um, and that's that's really it. Now, now let's say you, you have all of these tabs open here. Um, let's say you mm -hmm. want to close them and go back to live. If you click on the video tab one more time, and now right click on the tab, and you want to select close all but this, that's going to close every other tab and just leave you back to your video tab. Okay. Um, again, the software, we just are scratching the surface as far as measurements. Um, this software comes included with uh, XY stitching. Um, I think you don't have a slide holder in there. You'll need a slide holder to do that. Um, I do have one, but I yeah, took it so, off. <laughs> so it can do that. It can do Z stacking. You can do scale bar. You can do measurements. Um, actually, let me show you this real quick. Um, go to um, setup in the upper left and video overlay. Now you're not actually doing anything with the video, you're just putting an overlay on the screen. And then there it mm -hmm. says scale. So if you check off scale, show, I'm sorry. And then you can also, if you wanted to, show the magnification. And then I would just maybe change the color from yellow to black or blue or whatever. Um, you can also, if you wanted to, show the date and time as well as the clarity factor. The clarity factor is actually an autofocus function with, with built into the camera. We can I show you what that does. Just click show and I'll show you what that does. Okay, and now hit apply. Okay, and now okay. And now let's talk about this real quick. We're zoomed in. So see in the upper left hand corner, it says 40%. Mm -hmm. So because this is a 4K camera, you have a lot more resolution in the camera than your screen can handle because you don't have a 4K monitor. So we're actually zooming mm -hmm. in. So you actually can zoom to 100% before you, to get true resolution of the camera before you get the digital resolution. Now you're at your low mag objective, so it's not going to be the greatest anyway because you're not you're, you're only at two and a half x. The point mm -hmm. is here at 100 x, this is the true resolution of the camera. But what okay. I'm trying to show you here is select that drop down menu there and hit fit to window. Mm-hmm. There we go. So now we're back to that full field. And here you can see that we now have our scale bar up. So the scale bar again um, knows and also we checked off show magnification. And that's why the two and a half X is showing up there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the clarity factor, otherwise known as spot focus or find focus in some other softwares, is the highest number you can achieve is what the camera perceives to be the best focus. So if you focused out of if you made it out of focus, that number is significantly going to drop because mm -hmm. it's not in focus. So again, it's a very small little gimmick, but it's a nice tool that some pathologists really like because it will help you ensure, um, obviously you have two eyes and you trust your eyes, but the software can help you find the best clarity factor as well. Okay. okay. If you're still here with me, I think you're awesome. And it also means you're serious about your microscopic photography. So if you're interested in checking the camera out, there is an affiliate link below. This link is gonna take you to a page on iMiller Microscope webpage, and they're gonna ask you to type your email and the, it's a special page for me. You're gonna get a special offer with this link. And the price point is what good DSLR with a lens would be. So go ahead, type your information there. No worries. Mike is going to be in contact with you if you're interested in the camera. And I, of course, will very much appreciate if you buy it through my affiliate link. Once again, I appreciate so much you sticking till the end and I'm going to talk to you in the next episode.
Thank you.